Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Today's video, we're gonna go over the latest dyno session from the 540 Big Block Chevy Dyno Mule. So, um, if you're new to the channel, which I got a lot of uh, new subscribers, thanks to the Old Man's Garage, appreciate you joining in. I do a lot of dyno testing, um, pretty much everything. Uh, if there's something that you wanna see dyno tested, you can put it in the comments, and if I can make it happen, sometimes I do. I will say this, a lot of the dyno testing has come from crowdsource. So some people have parts and like, you know, is it possible for you could just put on your dyno engine that we can see what it does? And then I do that. That's happened quite a bit. So, but on this particular case, this is all my stuff. So, um, except for AFR did send these heads. So the, the big thing for this video is testing the AFR 385cc CNC ported big block Chevy heads on this 540 big block Chevy that I use for dyno testing. So that's the biggest thing for this. But two other things we're testing, they're all in this video. I was gonna make them separate, but it just isn't worth doing. So let me give you a rundown of what the engine is first, and then I'll tell you what it, what, what, how it dynoed before, and then what's changed now, and you could, we'll talk about some of the things that, that happened. Also, I'll show you the dyno sheets, obviously, and we'll go over all of that as well. So here's the, here's the rundown of the engine. It's a 540 big block Chevy. It's got a Merlin four block, so a world Merlin four block. Came from PBM, great to deal with, love that block. It's got a SCAT 4340 forged crankshaft, SCAT rods, and it has mall pistons. Now these ones are a little bit weird. The pistons themselves, they start off their life as a 38cc dome, but I used these pistons in engine masters, so they were like spares that I had, I guess, because I took them out. But in the engine masters, what I did is we, we cut off the top of the dome to get that dome down, because we had to target a certain compression ratio. So these are, they're shelf pistons, but they've been modified. So they actually have a 22 cc dome, which on the AFR 385 heads, it yielded 11.28 compression ratio. They've also been modified in this way. They have lateral gas ports. If you order mall pistons, uh, the power pack pistons, they don't come that way. They also have total seal, um, gapless rings. And uh, they've been, they were helpful enough to help me out with those rings as well. And those are on there. Uh, so. With these AFR 385 heads, 11.28 compression ratio. Before, when I was talking, which you'll see the results before, with the Promax heads, the compression ratio was like 12.2. So the AFR heads actually did reduce compression ratio because the chamber size was bigger. But I'll get to that more in a minute. But I'm only mentioning it now because I know some people have some confusion with that. The camshaft's a solid roller. And it's a comp piece, so I expect it myself. It's got 275 degrees of duration on intake and 288 on exhaust, it has 112 lobe separation, and it had an 822 lift on intake and 808 on exhaust. But I'll say this, in one of the tests that was done in this video that you're gonna watch, I took off the 1.7 rockers on the intake and put on 1.8, I'm gonna show you that result. The other thing that was tested in this as well was carburetors, because up top I have a um, Edelbrock 2896, that's a Super Victor 2. It has been port matched to the heads, but no other porting than that. Two inch uh, pro comp four hole tapered spacer and up top was a 1050 carburetor but the other thing that was tested was a 1250 uh, dominator as well. And I'm gonna show you those results. So that's kind of the rundown of what the engine is. It does have two and an eighth inch headers. This engine is just used for dyno testing. Um, maybe eventually I'll put it in my son's car if I can ever get it running as it is. But really it's just, it's just a dyno mill so we test different things. So enough of that about that. Let's just show you the results so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna start by showing you what it did before the AFR 385 heads were installed. So this was with the Promax 317 heads. Now these heads weren't stock because what I had done is I'd milled off like 54 thousandths. So the chamber size got to 110 cc's. I'd also redid the intake valve job and made it a 50 degree intake valve job. It actually hurt low lift flow. This was the last run that we had done. It has a nice oil pump pan on here and a Titan oil pump, which is phenomenal. That was actually worth some power, but the last time we had dynoed, it made 924 at 7,200 RPM, and it made 736 foot-pounds of torque, and it did it at 61. Again, that was with the Promax heads. So all that was done from this test to the next one was we just switched from the Promax 317 heads to the AFR 385 heads. Here's the difference. It lost. It's now 915 horsepower at 7,400 RPM, 698 uh, foot-pounds of torque at 6,100 RPM. 
Now you might say, wow, it makes the Pro Max look so much better. Again, those Pro Maxes weren't stock, but the biggest reason for the loss in power is the chamber size. So the Pro Max is 110. These ones are actually were 119. If you were ordering stock from AFR, they're 122. I had them milled to 119. So really, although these heads, which I'm gonna show you flow numbers in a second, the AFR 385s outflow these Pro Maxes by a considerable amount, the compression ratio loss is what hurt it. So we're looking at, if you mean you look at it, 924 to a 915, it lost nine horsepower. It lost quite a bit more torque, and that's that loss of compression ratio. Everything else remained the same. So at this point, one of the things I wanted to try was rockers. So again, with this, the only thing that was, that we, this was how it was. This had an, like I said, 822 lift on intake. When I switched to the 1.8 rocker, it would go to 871 lift. Left exhaust rocker, exactly the same. Unfortunately, it only did this. So we were 915 before. 1.8 ratio rockers brought it to 917. We can round up. 7,400 RPM. However, 702 foot-pounds of torque at 61. So it did gain more there. Uh, that's all it was worth. And if you look at the overlay, this will help you get a better picture of what happened. The black line is the 1.7 rocker. The red line is the 1.8. And if you look at it, the 1.7 is a little bit better down below 5,000. And before someone says, why don't you pull it below 5,000? This is not a tow truck engine. Um, but anyway... Through the middle, the 1.8 is definitely a lot better there, and that's why it had a bit more peak torque. But only at the peak horsepower was just slightly better. Which you might say, I don't make any sense, because really we went from a 822 lift, 871 lift. And trust me, I was like, that's very confusing, because I'm a huge preacher of more lift the better, which it still is. Um, overall, averages, this is better. This is just better, all right? It is better, not as good as what I hoped. But... I think I kind of figured it out. So one of the things about being on the dyno is you kind of you kind of figure out things and you look for what's going on and see if you can't figure it out. So one of the things that was really, I had a hunch on was I think the intake part of this is holding it back. Not so much the rocker or even the valve lift. I think the intake manifold and the carburetor was limiting it. And let me explain why. In an earlier test, we had switched from a Brodix BM 2001 to this Edelbrock piece we're running now and it gained almost 40 horsepower from an intake manifold swap. That's huge. Which is saying, hey, we've got some restriction upstream that you need to worry about. So the next thing that was done is David Beiser had actually sent me a 1250 Dominator, which and not necessarily even for this test. It's because we was trying to do a dual plane with the Dominator and he wanted to try that one. But he had sent me the car and I was like, well, it's here, let me just try this real quick. So all I did was switch carburetors. So his was a 1250, I was running a 1050. Both the air-fuel ratios, I got them as good as they could be. So let me kind of show you. So let me flip my pages this way again. Of course, it's in the wrong way. I probably should edit this out, but I'm not. So this was before. With the 1050, it made it again, 916, 701. I just put on a 1250 carburetor. That's the only thing that was changed. Look at this. 941, 715 foot-pounds of torque. That's huge. That bigger carburetor picked it up a lot, you know, more than the rockers, which makes you think, well, then the rockers weren't worth anything. I think what would happen is if we'd done it in a different order. So what if I'd put on the carburetor first, then switched the rockers, we probably would have seen a bigger horsepower difference with the rockers because the limiting factor wasn't the uh, amount of lift or how much air was coming in that side. It was the carburetor that was too small for this particular application. And that's what we see here. I mean, that's a huge jump, a gigantic jump. So just to give you an idea, let's look at the overlay and get a better picture of this. There you go. Red line, 1050, black line, 1250. 
And honestly, if I had a 1350 or even a 1425 carburetor, I think I still could get more. And I know you're thinking, nah, that's too big for that engine. To gain, if it was too big, it would gain slightly a bit more. This gained gigantic amounts. And look over the entire curve, only down really at the lower RPMs, did it make any other less of a difference. But through this entire, it's just better. Matter of fact, that's the best horsepower right now that this 540 has done, period. That's the best. And so right now, we're at the best it's ever done. And by the way, this is on 91 octane. So before, whenever we were running the Pro Max head, we did it on 110 because the compression ratio was higher. 91. So that's pretty impressive for a pump gas 540. That's really good. So if you're only interested in dyno results from that, there you go. But if you're, you want, you're an information junkie and you want to know more about the actual heads and the flow stuff, let me show you these. So let's just go to this. I had before told you that this was the flow numbers from the Pro Max head, these ones right here, because this is how they came after they milled in 50 degree valve job. So if you look, they only flowed 370, right? And exhaust went 279. But my mistake was, and that's what I put in my book, I had flowed these on a 4310 bore because these heads were used on the 496 dyno mule that I just did with Old Man's Garage before. However, the 540 has a 4.5 bore. Now, I don't have a 4.5 bore adapter, but I do have a 4.625, which is closer. And when I do that, that same head didn't do anything, just flo floated on a bigger bore. Woo! It really jumped up in flow. So, just to kind of give you an idea, the best it did before was 386, and it did it at 700 valve lift. Look at now. 406 at 700 valve lift, just from the bigger bore. Look at 400, 283. Look what it was before. 260 gigantic jump. Even look at the uh, short runner on the intake, 262 to a 291. So the bigger bore really did help it a lot. Now it didn't do much for the exhaust, by the way, 272 versus the 279 I actually hurt a little bit. But yeah, that, that's a big, big flow difference. And that might explain why this head made 924 horsepower. But how does that compare to the AFR 385? Because we switched heads Obviously, the chamber got bigger, so that hurt compression ratio, but how much better was their flow? Here's the AFRs. Now, I've got all the measurements, too. You can make sure you can, you can pause or whatever, look down on it. It's got some heavy valves, by the way. But if you look at it, at 400, the AFR, this is the long runner, goes 306, compared to just 283 from the Pro Max. The short runner is 295 versus 292 from the Pro Max, or 291. If we go to 700, which is where the Pro Max did its best, 414 on the AFR versus 405. So it's only about 10 down. But then that's where it gets really different up in this range. Because remember, I'm an 871 lift with this 1.8. 871 lift would put me at like 367, 373, somewhere in between those, right? On the long runner on the Pro Max. But on the AFR, I'm in the meat. 424 to 432, somewhere between there. And on the short run between 416 and 423 compared to 360 versus 362. So dramatically more air on the AFR, especially in the higher lifts. It even does better on the low lifts. The exhaust is better too at 304 versus my 272. Flow, by far better. This also has a 2350 intake valve versus 2300 intake valve. So all that, and you're like, well, that didn't make all that. I mean, same carburetor and stuff, it did make less power. That shows you how important compression ratio is. Compression ratio is really worth quite a bit. That's the difference between the 924 and the 915. However, I do wish I'd tried a bigger carburetor on this setup, So, but I didn't. Now you might say, what's going on with these heads now? Well, currently these heads, I am cut them out to a 2350 valve and I'll be porting them. When they're done, they're probably gonna flow more than this. I'm gonna tell you that, and then I'm gonna redyno it. So then you have a small chamber and a lot of flow. Maybe I'll get it to hit like 980 or something. We'll see. But that'll be later on, obviously. Anyway, hopefully that gives you something to chew on and think about during the day. So if you have any questions, make sure to put them in the comments. I'm hoping to do some more testing because I'd really, really, really like to do some more intake manifold testing with this because I've only tested three manifolds. This 2896 from Edelbrock, the Brodix BM2000, and then this one Brodix one that had a turtle in the inside. I would like to test the Profiler Sniper Junior intake manifold, and maybe a Brodix uh, 2017. Both of those are Dominator flange or made more for bigger engines. I think it would be really, really good. Um, 
Maybe that will happen in the future. If you've got one and you want to see tested, I'm great all for it. Also, I would love to test a tunnel ram. The ones I would really like to test is Profiler has this uh, tunnel ram that they have, and I actually have the carbs to run it too. And then also Edelbrock has this the one that I use on my Camaro, and it's 565, and that's like a 7085. And I say, why don't you rip it off your Camaro? It's too much of a pain in the rear. Um, but yeah, I would like to test both those on there because I think maybe we could get it to bunt, pop over into a, the thousand horsepower range if we did that. Ported Pro Maxes, um, the Tunnel Ram, maybe. It'd be fun. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching this video. Guys, remember I'm not a Superman. I do not port cast iron heads. You guys take care.